How is it going, folks? It is Thursday night. It is 8 p.m. It is time for your Big Gold Belt Wrestling Podcast. And we got a show that's going to be all over the map tonight. We're going to get into NXT, taking it to the extreme, ECW Arena on a Wednesday night. Is this even a war on Wednesday night anymore or not? We'll get into that. We're going to get into politics because, my God, it's that time of year. And wrestling and politics is crossing over. We will open up with that. Plus, we got Halloween Havoc this weekend. We'll probably get into some other stuff. So much going on. Stay with us, folks. Your Big Old Belt Wrestling Podcast starts right now. Yeah. Big Old Belt. How is everyone doing here tonight? We are so glad you are here with us for the Big Gold Belt Wrestling Podcast. We got most of the team here tonight. It has been a bit, but let me go around the horn here. I am Will up on the top right of the screen. Below me, we got Silly Sellis. To the left is Silly Sellis. On the bottom left is the giant crab of Jamal. And across from me on the top left, the boss man himself, Two Chains, is here. Gentlemen, is glad to see so much of the team here this week to talk some wrestling and even some political stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what has the show become? I see now. Now, see, here's the problem. I go away for a, a couple of weeks, and now we're talking politics. What a crazy time! Also, everybody, get out there and vote. That that's that, if there's anything there to be go. learned from you tonight's show, go vote. You told us not to. I mean, we we try, there you to, go. We there try you go. to be creative there. without you, boss. There you go. There is our nonpartisan statement of the evening. Just get out there and vote. You got two weeks to do it. Get get to it already, please. In some places you can already do it. I did it this week. So yes, take care of that. We will not. I don't think we're going to go too deep into this, but we're going to open up with it because I don't even know what there is to say when a former president goes on a podcast with the Undertaker. Yeah. Two weeks before a gigantic election. But it's happened. That's the timeline we are living in. In case you've been under a rock, The Undertaker had very special guest, Donald Trump, on mm -hmm. his podcast this past week. And uh, I am not going to sit here and tell you that I watched it because, no, I was not going to devote my time to that. But I saw enough clips just to be like, what on earth is going on? <laughs> it, I don't know. Did, I'll throw this out first. Did anyone actually watch a thing? I've watched bits uh, and pieces of it. Same, the first okay. half, the first half same. of it. I saw the I saw the TikTok clip with the the promo with because it was a promo uh, with Kane, Undertaker, and 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 uh, Agent Orange, and I saw that the first time. And of course, I was like, "Oh, this this is just silly." And then I was like, "Oh, they're being serious." And then that's when I saw that they actually did a podcast. So, like, you know, is this Trump's like camp campaign tour? To hit all his major uh his major news outlets and sources and supporters um but yeah it wasn't going to get much of my time i watched bits and cl clips to kind of see how legitimate it was was it actually a real right. interview or was it this full gimmick and um it didn't hold my attention because how could it it's like it just did it, it, it was it was a it was a nut job that's all i'll say yeah, the, the 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 clip that they put out first to preview the whole thing last week with with Taker and Kane and Trump in the middle, it was just like, oh my God, it's 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 Donald Trump and the Brothers of Destruction telling <laughs> you that telling you that don't vote for people that Dave Batista likes. <laughs> it, it, crazy times. The only clip I saw that I just had to laugh at was there's a portion of that interview. Where of course, and I chalk this up as this is every conversation you have with an elderly if they find out you like wrestling, where they start bringing up people from back in the day, and going on about you know, oh in my day, <laughs> like yeah. so out of nowhere, Trump's going on to, to take her about you know, what about Haystacks Calhoun? <laughs> you know, like, like he was a big guy. <laughs> it's just like, oh my god, yeah. oh my god. Okay, that's my only thought. On it. That's all I, I saw. Was that you know, like, that's every elderly folk talking wrestling right there? 
so some some of the takes from it so so first of all i again I, i'm gonna stand on you know make sure you go out there and vote uh because it is a very important election and um the fact that pro wrestling is getting involved with it um you know doesn't want to take away from the severity of the importance of voting here because you know in a world in a very niched community of pro wrestling people think that sometimes this is what the world revolves around um and this is much much bigger um to that point uh the, one of the takes from the interview was the undertaker cl- proclaiming that donald trump has made politics fun um and i love mick foley's response to this uh today or yesterday um mick foley put out a like a 10 minute um uh little uh think tank on everything and 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 where does he stand and now we see because of the world of pro wrestling but also just in in the world in general everybody's picking sides of things um and 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 these ads these paid ads that we see um from our now our nominees and 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 the sort of the shots that they throw at one another we see that the wrestlers are getting involved as well too um and 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 so um, it's it's reaching a different community, but like the styling of how elections have been ran in the last 10 years really is wrestling ish. You know, people are going out there, they're doing promos. Um, I, I got to be honest, Trump whole thing in the beginning before it got really scary was a gimmick. If you ask me, it's like I'm going to go out there and I'm going to try to say the hot take and get people behind me and whatnot. Um, so it's kind of on par. But at the, at the end of the day, it's still a very serious matter that. Um, folks need to go out there and do their diligence. So um, it, it, it it's it's just interesting that we're in 2024 and these things are happening right now. <laughs> like We're talking about Mick Foley. We're talking about Dave Batista, Undertaker and Kane being pivotal figures in one's campaign for the election. Um, that that's something. And, and And honestly, what was it like? it was four years ago where the NBA was really involved with it as well as the NFL. So I don't know, just the progression of American politics, man. I would, I would love to, 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 to kind of hear what a foreigner would say about what they're seeing. Cause this is just a wild time. And the undertaker next to Donald Trump talking about <laughs> don't vote for them, vote for this person. Like what? <laughs> If I can add, I think this is more like, and once again, I hope my audio is good, but, uh, folks. I've just been terrible with audio, but I hope it's not good. But I think this is the perfect, you know, definition of this podcast being like a work versus a shoot at the same time, um, <laughs> but just using it in the a, a realm of politics. And when you have somebody like the Undertaker who's been doing this for years, Donald Trump is trying to use this angle like he kind of did when he was in that past WrestleMania. Ooh, how can I get more people to vote for me or get for me on this level by acting like I can relate to being a part of the locker room, being a part of the culture? So am I doing the work or if I'm doing a shoot right now? And I think that's what it was like a perfect definition of a blending that blurred lines to see, OK, is Donald Trump really like this for those that may be novice? Or is he a really cool guy to relate to because he's working with The Undertaker, which everybody <laughs> loves The Undertaker. But that's the way I saw it. <laughs> so. There's obviously a lot about this and a lot about what goes into making something like this happen. And let's be clear. uh, I don't care who you vote for. Just go vote. That's number one. Uh, Number two, I saw it as two WWE Hall of Famers (laughs) sitting down and having a discussion. Hall of Fame Symposium. Yeah, that's what it is. That's all it is. That's, That's really all it is. Now, as far as the nature of the, the, the meat of the interview itself and um, it was a lot of uh, Trump and, and his uh, word salad, you know, just going to these 15, 25 minute long monologues. And then The Undertaker going in with a, uh-huh. and then, you know, and, but either way, it's, it's a conversation that they had. OK, fine. Uh, it is not for me to say whether or not you should or should not enjoy it or listen to it. That's, you know, for you to decide. My question is about all of it is especially in wrestling, since everything is such based on kayfabe or the idea of, you know, working a crowd and and with a promo and stuff like that. And that's what we've seen that happen. Uh, ESPN is not ESPN in their coverage without the rise of pro wrestling. And we're seeing that happen in in politics, unsurprisingly, from the guy that was in WWE. Uh, You know, so now the question is becoming as the... um, 
that mid two thousands crop of wrestlers now retiring and doing uh, and becoming vocal into other avenues. Is this something that we want to see more of? Do we want to see more uh, talent break that fourth wall and become uh, spokespersons for who, whatever political entity they, they choose? Do we want to see Dave Batista um, with this like little goofy roasting, roasting session that he did on, on Twitter or whatever that was? Do we want to see The Undertaker or Steve Austin um, interview um, you know, a political candidate? Uh, even in the other direction, do we want to see, you know, Mick Foley, who would arguably the more liberal side of things, interview Bernie Sanders? Um, should there be this separation of, you know, wrestling, kayfabe and politics? Because the reason why we watch wrestling is to escape the other 23 hours of politics that we're going to see on TV on every other channel that surrounds the wrestling channel. Uh, but now that that seems to blend in. Um, is this something that we should embrace in that we have an actual audience of, of fans that are, that should be more informed. And unfortunately, if they're not coming to you, you have to go to them. So should we Boy. see, uh, you know, whether it's Kamala Harris or Trump or Tim Walls or you know, any of the 500 senators and, and representatives that need to do a thing in Maryland, do we need uh, Angela also Brooks versus Larry Hogan, two out of three falls at the no. um, at the Royal Farms Arena in Baltimore. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, I, I I think a testament to all of this is like, and I don't know a lot of wrestling fans are going to be in denial. Like, I don't care for this. I don't want this. But like, let's not pretend like everybody didn't tune in at the um, the DMC for Hogan to get up there and do what we knew Hogan was going to do. He's so. It, and, and that's just what it is. It's like at this point now, and I think Trump is fully aware that any bit of publicity is publicity, um, whether it's good or bad. And and the most uh, the other factor in all of this is everybody has a platform, one way or another. If you have a brand, you have a mic, that's a platform. So Undertaker, and under, the Undertaker in this podcast, the Undertaker in this comedy show, not two things I will ever care about. But people are buying tickets and people are listening and subscribing and so on. So, you know, it's not far in between for that to happen. Hell, does Stone Cold end up having somebody pull up soon? I'm sure. I wouldn't be surprised. They, It's viewers. And when you think about the most radical people in their platforms, when you think about, um, what's, what's his name? Fear Factor. Um, Rogan? Joe Rogan. Rogan. When yeah. you think about Rogan, when you think about Jake Paul and, and DePaul's itself, you know, uh, even drink tra champs at, 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 at that. And these are just, I'm not going, we're not going to sit here and be like, they're the most qualified people to be hosting these type of interviews. Subjective, of course. But people still go and people still tune in. So they, it just don't matter. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Ric Flair gets involved too, because you know he likes to get him with some attention one way or another. So well, well, let me ask you this then. What do you, what do you think about a, a, a character that for his career has taken on a very um, extremist side, either side of the platform, right? Maybe it's the super liberal dude love that has always been dude love, right? Who would be uh, a hemp smoking hippie from Vermont and it's dude love and Bernie Sanders doing a thing, right? And then you have the undertaker, the American badass, you know? So we All see right. that, you know, that character also uh, be a thing like, I thought he was an undead mortician. Where did he get this Harley from? <laughs> Nobody's asking these questions. But okay, fine. Why is but he an if... MMA zombie all of a sudden? Right. <laughs> but, but what happens if it's somebody that doesn't have, uh, that doesn't live to that aesthetic? What if Bradshaw, for example, uh, the billionaire Texan wrestling god, mm -hmm. came out and was a super you know, hippie liberal douchebag and him and Tim Walls were best friends? Or what if, Somebody that you would expect to be more liberal, like Shane Strickland, for example, you know, urban black guy that has all of these aesthetics incorporates it to his, to his gimmick. And he turns out to be the most conservative person about every issue that you've ever heard of. What do you right. think that, that does for the gimmick too, going so you, you just never know. Yeah. And I, I think yeah. if I can go for that, I think what people strive for is realism. And the reason why people enjoy these podcasts, the reason why people listen to these things or get the viewerships, like you said to James, they're trying to figure out 
can I get a story that is real life behind the scenes where I can feel what it's like to be in that locker room, to be in that company, to be in that scene without actually being in there? So I, what you're saying, you know, Jamal, if we had a Swerve Strickland that was super conservative and that's who he really was, you might have people saying, I'm really interested in his characters because this is how he really is. Now it will break so many stereotypes that people may not understand and realize. But if they say, I'm getting an insight to you know who you are, then it, it it shows a realism to what they need to see. And I think people strive for that realism. I, I here's my last two comments on this really quickly. Um, I like my wrestling to be my wrestling and politics to be his politics. I am not trying to draw a correlation between the two. It's disgusting to me to even think about how they how is it how it is even possible to be a thing. Um, but the other thing I'm gonna say is um, and I've been very adamant about this in terms of like really critiquing all of entertainment and media over the last 10 years. But America's just ran on drama. He ran, he ran, he, Trump won his first election off of pure drama. The reality shows and the ratings they get, the multiple season renewals is because people love the drama. Doesn't care about anything else. It's Zeus Network. That's How is that a thing? I, I think exactly. it was um, Abraham Lincoln that said, uh, controversy creates cash. <laughs> there you go. And as any old time pro wrestler will tell you, like Abraham Lincoln, everything is a work. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. just so like, yeah, it, it is what it is, man. That's the state of America. It's just all ran on the drama, the controversy. So that's why all these people have platforms. That's why these influencers are who they are. You know, these folks going around. Uh, um, and, and the dude that was going around beating people up after the Ravens and Commanders game, you know, he's it's, it's a thing because and he no, did I think the something thing. else happened with that. Because no, nobody nobody gets clocked that hard for no reason outside of in, in Baltimore for something else happened. Yeah, I mean he's about to get some time, but I mean the whole thing is who builds that type of courage and who's recording him unless it's going to get the views or it's like it's a thing because I'm an influencer and I got to do this 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 whole stint, this my gimmick and whatnot. Nah, the that dude was, was drunk gonna... from Dundalk. I mean, I, you know, real, 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 real <laughs> shit. Uh, you know. Yeah, and, they, and I... people was talking shit outside of Cross Street Market, and and, and dude got clocked. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm just saying the only reason why he's going to jail is because it made the news. Well, w w again, it made the news because of just the drama that we live in and also because it stinks of influencers uh, skits bullshit. So that's, that's my true. take. Uh, Will, let, let's, let, what you got to say, man? I said what I was saying. I got nothing to say about it. <laughs> I, I, agree, I, I agree with you that let's, let's keep this shit Will. separate. I, I, don't, I do not need to see the MMA zombie and hear his uh political takes. I don't care. Yeah. You know, <laughs> most of yeah, these wrestlers, sure. I don't care. And, and, to, and that. to that, to add to that point, I said that back then, where like, who is the American badass? Why is he coming out the Rip Kid Rock? Make this yeah. gimmick make sense. Um, if if that's and it doesn't mean that your gimmick can't evolve. Uh, nobody's clowning Kofi Kingston because he's not from Jamaica anymore. Nobody's clowning John Cena because he's not the prototype anymore. So it's just that if your gimmick evolves in a way that makes sense, then sure. But for him to come out as a hard right turn and people collectively went, who? Oh. <laughs> okay, well, shit, yeah, whatever, yeah, go ahead, it's a good song. Okay, fine. So uh, I think that is what it is. But yes, personally, I don't want to see the further melding of hardcore politics and wrestling. Uh, okay. Let's keep it separate, keep it safe, still go vote. Yeah. There you go. Let's leave it at that. Our non partisan <laughs> statement on the Big Old Belt Wrestling Podcast. Please go vote. That's going to leave it at that. And enough political talk for this. And vote down the ballot too, not just for president. There's more. There's more. Y'all live in states. Y'all got shit going on. And if a person that does not live in the state, uh, you know, please go vote all the way down the ballot. You know, there's a lot there of important go. stuff going on where you live. Yes, a lot of local elections going on on the on, yeah. the, on the second page when I got to that thing. All right, let's switch gears. I had to dig out my ECW shirt tonight to talk about this one because. There was rumors about this, and now it's legit. It's definitely happening, and hell, the show's already sold out. So, since this ties into the election, on the first week of November, November 6th, Wednesday night, NXT will not be airing on Tuesday because it's election night. So, the CW affiliates are going to be busy with the news. They said, no NXT, you got to run Wednesday. So, that puts them up against Dynamite, like how it used to be. So, they're pulling out some curveballs here, making things interesting. NXT on November 6th will be emanating 
from the 2300 Arena, formerly known as the ECW Arena, in Philadelphia. And they made no mistake about it when they announced it this week. Got right to the point of digging out the old ECW footage, playing all into that. That hey, we're going to be at ECW Arena. What's going to happen? Are they going to take it to the extreme and all this? So there's a couple things here that came to mind for me when this whole thing got announced. We just had Title Tuesday from AEW, what, maybe two, three weeks ago, where they went up yeah. against where they went up against NXT on the CW for the first time. And it was just not even close. I mean, I'll no. be fair and say that AEW seemed to be much more concerned with a promoting Russell Dream at the time. So they did not put a ton of hype and promotion into that show being on Tuesday. And they got so it wasn't even close as far as the right. audience went for right. it. Just, just a, a bloodbath as far as that went. Now we're going to get the flip side in two weeks where NXT will go to Wednesday. So it'll be AEW's night. And they are, as I said, they're making no damn mistake here. They're making sure you know right away we're going to do ECW. is going to be a thing. Not your normal show. So before we even get into what this show should be, in 2024, is this any kind of Wednesday night actual competition? Or is this going to be a repeat of what we just saw on Tuesday? You like what you like at this point. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think, that's think true. Uh, if you would have said this, you know, three, four or five years ago, um, back when the so-called war was, was happening, uh, it was a war largely because of the fact that the two shows were charting, treading the same water. Mm-hmm. And now that AEW is whatever it's evolved into now, and now that NXT on the CW has evolved into what it's, it, it is now, the really the only common ground is that they're wrestling shows on the same night at the same time. So I think at this point, um, with AEW kind of resetting after Wrestle Dream and continuing to build towards full gear, uh, that is not the same thing, a trajectory as NXT, who, to be fair, has the same issue that AEW have. They're on a new night, uh, even though they're only a few weeks into their new uh, time slot on a new network, they are having that uprooted for the night for reasons. Also, also, this is the night out of the election after the election for everybody. So yeah. God only knows what's going to happen as far as rating goes anyway. You know, yeah. our people... Those, those news channels are going to be killing it. The for news sure. channels it's, are it's going to be killing choice. it, especially in the instant reaction. And God forbid the election's close. And they have to do a recount or a recall, or there's some shenanigans at some truck stop in Topeka. The you know, the idea of ratings throw that shit out the window, because we, uh, you know, it's going to be a bloodbath regardless, because this will be a news event that spills over to the next day. Yeah. Unless the opposite happens and we have a rout of a win on for either party, please go vote. The idea is um, for either NXT. I think the onus is on them to put together a more high value show, even though what they have been doing on the CW, they've set the bar medium to high and have kept that going because of the fact that this is a new audience for them and they need to continue that, you know, with the consistency that it deserves. And I don't think that this show is any different. I don't see why you don't do Halloween Havoc. You know, not Halloween Havoc, um, NXT or an ECW arena or whatever, they could have done it any time of the year and they would still need to put on the type of show that they need to put on to make this more than just a special event in a special building. I think the biggest thing that NXT should do here is just make it nostalgic. You can't recreate what they had in ECW. And honestly, if you want to make this a hardcore versus hardcore show, AEW has done it so many times, so it's not like you're doing anything different. Because like you said at the beginning, you guys said at the beginning, it's the same show on both networks or both areas. It's just you like what you like. But if you bring some nostalgic moments, maybe bringing back a couple of past ECW members, throw a couple of clips about what the past was, you know, maybe, you know, one match where you have an old timer versus somebody that's up and coming to give that person a little rub to be, say, okay, this person could be coming up next on the main roster then I think just keep it nostalgic. If you keep it simple and don't overdo it, I think that's the best way that NXT should do it. Um, it's, it's not going to be a big thing for me. I think just honoring it being at the ECW arena is enough within itself. So it I shouldn't be... The Philly ECW crowd is going to play a major game too. All over again. <laughs> what would you say? Well, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hear that. No, it's, 
So it shouldn't be ECW one night stand all over again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'll never know. <laughs> yeah, the stars would never align for that. But I'll be honest, man. When I saw the announcement, I didn't care. Um, I didn't care because it's just like any Madison Square Garden uh, an event for me. Um, it's just kind of like, oh, OK, cool. I, I don't know. I, I think it's it happens so often and it's such a common thing. We're not going to act like MLW didn't just run out of the 2300 arena forever. I think TNA did as well, too. So, like, this does nothing for me. The, the building, we, we, we appreciate it. Um, you know, a lot of history being done there. The crowd from Philly will show up. New York crowd, other traveling folks will going to come. But that's just it, man. That this, this did nothing for me. Um, in, in fact, one day before this event, uh, may may look a lot like ECW all, all over the United States. So, <laughs> <laughs> so they got a tough act to follow, if you ask me. Uh, but it being there, it mean it, it means nothing to me. Um, and honestly, anybody who's going to try to live up a uh, uh, um a ecw gimmick at this point now it's just cosplay <laughs> there's no way you're recapturing that magic or being able to put on the type of show that they've done um times have changed um for the better some may say um and it just doesn't reek the nxt dna for it. and also cw just you know cut a deal i'm sure they got top interest in terms of how this is going to be handled on their network um and, and that right there should make a lot of influence of what the presentation is going to be oh yeah, uh, yeah pretty much tv <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> if uh if nick gage got in trouble for using a pizza cutter then how do you expect the uh ecw um you know thing to happen on on on, on network television you know yeah nick Kid gage could use a pizza cutter on cable Kindle sticks, you know, announce announcer table. That's that's it. Right. Some now some, what some I do cheers hitting each other, but yeah, yeah. Now what I, I do plan on seeing is you know Rob Van Dam coming in for a match, or maybe you do a couple things. You bring in some some extra people, um, you know, for some spots. Maybe Joey Styles calls a match, you know, at the main event or something Paul like Heyman that. Heyman opening that up, would be cool. yeah, Heyman, be cool. you know, I, I, yeah, Heyman opening up. I'm you sure know. we'll get a Dudley's appearance. You know, the the, the yeah, people right. that. Are our hall in their hall of fame deals already? That's the people who are going to show up, yeah. yeah. So, I have no, and again, it's only a two hour show, so you, you can't be too much on the uh, on the nostalgia, you know, part and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, I, I think that I don't see how it would be any different than being in a Madison Square Garden or the Hammerstar and Ballroom or something like that. Uh, but the show really doesn't have any type of connection to e e e uh, NXT anyway, so for them to run in the uh in the building is just for them to have an excuse to say this is a blank city street fight <laughs> i guess i might be Billy street parent. fight yeah of course yeah. Uh, who's yeah. the last ecw champion they will probably show up do y'all know who huh? that was the last ever ecw champion. we we talking which which version you talking wwe the newer version. You said not, last not, ever. not the throwback the newer version when it came in just rebooted with wwe whatever before nxt took over that spot why am I thinking Christian Cage? But I don't think that's right. Mm -mm. One Christian. God, who had it at the end? <laughs> I'm sitting here. I'm thinking of Rhino had it. You see Ezekiel <laughs> Jackson. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> we bring it uh, back, Ezekiel uh, Jackson. Okay, Salas. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's bring it back for yeah. one night. No, I, yeah. No. Good, good job on the trivia here. Yeah, well. No. I don't, I don't know why I thought it. Punk. Way off. Um. <laughs> But punk coming in in some level of representations obviously would draw ratings, but the correlation is as flimsy as my guess here for who was the last champ champion. So yeah, you know, but then but maybe Shane comes through with the fight pit. You know, who knows? <laughs> we, we we all still waiting for Shane O'Mac. So yeah. Yeah. all right, well they got two weeks to figure out what they're gonna do with it. And they just announced it this week. Joe's already sold out. I mean that wasn't gonna take much. That that small. Yeah, I mean it only it. it only holds a thousand max. So yeah, so. They're going to have a pack crowd. It'll be hot. And it'll just be a matter of what it actually is and what kind of angle they try to pay, take with it as far as like drawing attention to the try to get people watch NXT on a Wednesday night as opposed to a Tuesday. So, yeah. all right. We'll keep an eye on that. We'll see what's up with that next couple of weeks. But we are at halftime. So uh, we will go to our halftime break now. When we come back, we will have the indie spotlight. And then yep. after that, 
we'll get into some. I, th- I think Jamal's has some extra little topics we're going to get into, and we're going to cap things off with looking at NXT Halloween Havoc going down this weekend. So we got a whole second half of the show coming up, folks. So stay with us. Lots still to come. Your Big Old Belt Wrestling Podcast will be back right after this a little birdie told me everybody that you may be interested in doing some sponsorship and advertising opportunities with us here at big gold belt media you know what you might as well because we are the golden standard for all of your media needs why would you want to go anywhere else besides all of your pre-roll ads your mid-roll ads as well as your on-air reads are going to be done by me damien g yeah professional broadcaster damien g We do all types of social media promotions. That means your podcast, your IG, your Facebook, your Twitter, and your business website all get shouted out on our network here at Big Gold Belt Media, where we cover wrestling, movies, comics, and more. And you can find out more information and make those inquiries, kids, because, you know, limited time offer here at BigGoldBeltGroup at gmail.com. Again, that is BigGoldBeltGroup at gmail.com. Why would you want to go anywhere else? I wouldn't. Well, I work here, but I still wouldn't even if I didn't. So again, Big Gold Belt Media for all your sponsorship and advertising opportunities, your podcast, your IG, your Facebook, your Twitter, all of your social media platforms, as well as any business website you want us to promote on our show, Big Gold Belt Group at gmail.com. And let them know Damon G sent you. All right, folks, when we come out of halftime, we always like to check out what's happening on the indie scene. So here's Giant Crab with this week's Big Gold Belt Podcast Indie Wrestling Spotlight. So regardless of what happens on November the 6th, Election Day, uh, a lot of people are going to be running for the board of the Canada. And since you're up there, you might as well uh, stick around to the 17th, a Sunday, for Smash Wrestling and TNA Wrestling Race for Impact. Uh, They're doing a joint show in London, Ontario, Canada at the London Music Hall. It's in right in downtown London, uh, 185 Queens Avenue in beautiful downtown London, Ontario, walking distance from Via Rail, right in the middle of downtown. Uh, London, if you don't know, is about two hours from Buffalo, two and a half-ish from Toronto, two hours from Detroit. So if you're there or anywhere in between, uh, it's going to be a very interesting show to see the stars of TNA and the stars of Smash Wrestling Canada's, I would say Canada's uh, best indie uh, indie promotion. Uh, it looks like a hell of a card November 17th in London for TNA and Smash Wrestling. Uh, doors open at 4, the bell gongs at 5. Uh, you need to be in London, Ontario, Canada, not the other one. Uh, Sunday, November 17th, uh, they have... You can get tickets to Smash Wrestling uh, doc, smash-wrestling.com uh, and click on the Brace for Impact banner. But, uh, yeah, it looks interesting. Uh, they have VIP uh, seating. Tickets include reserved seating, first entry, uh, in-ring photos before the show. Tickets will be mailed to you, and you can confirm you to be confirmed at the store. Um, it's a lot of going things going on. They have a full list of who's going to be on the show. Uh, Kevin Blackwood is a guy that I really like and would love to be up there to see it. So if you're fleeing the country because of whatever – Political hellscape this thing is going to be in after November, after the election day in November, um, November 17th, London, Ontario, Canada for TNA and Smash Wrestling, Race for Impact, which is a powerful thing to say, considering we have the election coming up. But that's what it's going down November 17th, a Sunday in London. And that's the Indie Spotlight for this week. Go vote. There you go. Hey, Our nonpartisan hey. statement this week. Go vote. <laughs> hey, what, what's, your, what's your thoughts about uh, Maple Pro Wrestling? Maybe we'll leave pro la- pro wrestling. I didn't watch it. So. Um, the only, th- I mean, it reminds me a lot of Smash Wrestling in that it's a high level indie with you know pretty good production value. Pretty uh, good. I it was that pretty good. good. Um, I, I would it, say it looked, like, it looked like a TNA show. It, it, it's, well, Scott the Moore's running it, so yeah, why yeah, wouldn't yeah. it be looking like it? So what I will say is that I still hate Mauro Ronaldo with a fiery passion. Yeah, yeah, that was I a mean, turn off for me when I heard he was doing commentary. Yeah, my my big thing is that I mean, you know, we know how some of these new promotions come out the gate, um, and they they don't they don't see the the light of day. But I mean, this looks legitimate. A lot of notable names and folks involved, and um, Canada is forever a a, a, a hungry. Um, it's a market. A hungry, yeah, hungry market. So yeah. I, I I'm looking to see more, man. I and, and the fact they're already getting publicity from AEW, I mean, it's good. So 
good to yeah. see Scott back in things. And uh, I think we should keep our eyes on that to see what they do. Might be might make it another destination to get out to Canada for shows. Um, yeah, no, it looks interesting. It will obviously time will tell to see how what the longevity is. Uh, it being the new shiniest toy, especially in wrestling, means a lot more uh, now than it could over over time. Um, that's why, uh, similarly to NXT's point uh, about how they are the new shiny toy. They they are on a new network. They are on national television. A lot of firsts for NXT, so they got to keep the the gas pedal floored. Maple Leaf uh, Pro Wrestling is is doing the same thing, especially considering that it's Scott Demore, uh, the relationship with AEW, the relationship with the um, with the better indie wrestlers uh, throughout Canada. Uh, the only other question is like, well, where's the TV deal? You know, and then we can judge the separates yeah, them from a. No, I'm yeah, just I'm saying, like, but that's yeah, the difference, yeah. though. Because GCW I, is about to run Hawaii. We, TJPW is coming over from Japan to work a show with Defy. Deadlock is kicking ass in North Carolina. So the only thing that really separates all of them from being A plus you know, tier indies and a B plus tier show is a TV deal. Otherwise, it's in our streaming show. <laughs> we have tons yeah, of I mean, I, listen, I'm, listen. I, we 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 always talk about like you know, allow allow his time to grow and and get his rootings and whatnot. I I don't I don't think TV deal solidifies good wrestling, um, because we come no, from sure. the days of wrestling. evolved and 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 so many others that did not technically have good TV deals, and then there is pro wrestling shows that do have TV deals, like um, what's the joint um that had the um the Netflix show names. The Al Snow um, promotion. Oh, oh I, I was right. It's hit my tongue. But like you know, we're not really constantly talking about that. So I just think that from them coming out the gate, having a night, two night show, having implications that affects other pro wrestling uh, promotions, the names there, stack cars, good promotion, legitimate commentary. Um, I think we should keep our eyes on them. We'd like to see where they end up in a let's say about sure. six months. No, so. absolutely. But I, but I think that like. You know, traditionally, and then when I say TV deal, it doesn't have to be on on over the air. It can be streaming. I just don't want. I don't want to hear t- a goddamn TV deal about a promotion that's ran two shows. I just don't. That's <laughs> no, just again, like- <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that like they need one today. I'm just saying that if they keep up their current level of doing things, then what would be the thing that separates them from the higher level indies that already do that thing? Consistency. Right. And so, the, and I think the thing that would separate them, because if we're out of the gate, they're shooting out like a cannon. So the difference between them and MLW or GCW or Deadlock or whoever your flavor of choice is, the thing that the, the glass ceiling that they would probably want to break somewhere down the road would be a consistent, uh, you know, distribution deal. Let's not call it TV. And that's all I'm saying. That, that's all that that's that should be the next hurdle for them to cross down the road whenever they cross it. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. By Thursday. Get it done. <laughs> Get it done this week. This week. Yeah, there this you week. go. All right. Preemptive what else you want to get into? Already. What else you want to get into, Crab, before we so, start talking Halloween happens? I saw, I saw a thing that was interesting. Um, Julia Hart said in an interview that she is ready to go. She was injured earlier. Lost the uh, t- uh, TBS championship to Willow. Uh, way back when, uh, everybody knew that she was hurt. Worked the match, you know, good shit. Good on you, Julia, for making the CBS championship a thing. And she says, "quote I am ready, just waiting for the call. Who knows when I'll pop up?" Uh, she last last uh, wrestled back in April in uh, for AEW Dynasty, and where she lost to uh, Willow in a house rules match. The question is, every we talk a lot about AEW in the sense that everybody's jockeying for TV time or the inability to craft, give us some stories, the an added, you know, bonus that they need because they just don't have the time. We were talking about Miro and how he's like, well, I'm ready to go. I'm just waiting for the call or somebody else is waiting for the call. Do you think that AEW needs a hard roster split to give people more opportunity to not just sit at home and wait for the call? And this has nothing to do with the alleged show shockwave that's floating around out there. I mean, right, just well, in just, general. Just between dynamite and collision. Just with we, we yeah, just between dynamite six. and collision, do you think that they should have an actual hard roster I mean, uh, split? I mean, hell, when those shows were, when that when collision was created, 
it was with the idea that, you know, there was going to be the informal roster split of the folks who can't get along are on this show and the other folks <laughs> who can't get along are on that show. And that didn't end up lasting. But that was <laughs> the idea when they launched that. So I think in this day and age, it doesn't have to be like an announced roster split. It doesn't have to be like, you know, a full on draft like WWE does. But if you have like kind of informally static rosters for each show, and people kind of know I'm a Saturday guy or I'm a Wednesday guy, but there'll be some movement here and there as needed. I don't think that's a bad thing. It's just a matter of how you divide it up. And I think the key thing more than anything is if you're going to do that, you need to give each show its own identity. There needs to be a difference between why would I want to watch Dynamite or why would I want to watch Collision? There needs to be some hook, something to make the two shows different from each other as opposed to just, oh, well, Group A's on this one, Group B's on this one. Give, nothing, give, give, give me an identity of some sort. And I agree with you, Will. Will and, and let me ask this, and I think I'm right by this, but both is different types of belts on both shows. Like Dynamite has its own world title, and it's another world title on Collision, right? Or is it, I know it's the one AEW world title, but is it like a, a top tier belt on each show already? No. Where then you can all, the all those belts are all over the place. No. And, and, yeah, and yeah, that's no. the problem. If you make the identity, like let's say no, even Collision, the Ring of Honor uh, belt uh, sneaks behind the payroll every now and again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like let's say if you make one of them like Collision is about tag team wrestling. So that way, when you know you watch Saturdays, you're going to get legit tag team wrestling. Right. And you know, you know, for. Uh, you, know, you could just set it up that way, but I agree with you. Well, you need an identity to set the tones of what your shows, once again, to make it different from each other, but to also still make it different from WWE, which is still a bigger issue here, which they don't have their identity truly from WWE. Yes, you're getting all these former WWE hires, but what are you doing with these wrestlers? I, I mean, I, I don't agree with that. I think AEW definitely reeks AEW to its fullest extent, um, but I, I, I do think that yeah, I, I agree, Will. It doesn't need to be a grand formal, like, this person's here and this person's there. But I do think there needs to be booking that um, pretty much segregates folks between the shows to, so you don't have these type of issues where uh, people are just sitting on the bench waiting to get the call, nothing to do, because you have people bouncing from both and you're trying to run storylines between two shows um, and, 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 it's, and it's hurting uh, crippling the folks um, either coming off for of injury reserves or just on the bottom tier of your roster opportunity to gain some momentum. So I think I kind of agree a little bit with every what everyone's saying. I, I don't think that they need a hard line AEW draft commissioner. We're yeah, going to yeah. keep the things apart. I don't think they need to do that. But I do think, and I would like to see in the way that you give a show an identity, maybe dynamite as the show that has more of your traditional AEW in the same in the in its current form of storylines you know the bucks jericho the factions run of the, run of this thing and then maybe uh singles wrestlers get more of a shine on um collision and they maybe they spend a little bit more time with the women's uh title they okay. you know maybe the women's get two matches uh, out of the eight they would have in two hours instead of the one that they would have in the six on dynamite maybe tag team matches get two matches on dynamite versus one every other week on collision uh, so if you want to see a specific flavor and you watch the cream separates the you know the wheat from the chaff separate you maybe you see that in the course if you have a singles wrestler then you wouldn't need a tag team title on this show per se <laughs> if you have because they have 56 fucking singles belts already. <laughs> um, so in that regard, people can show up wherever they want. But do we, you know, what room do they have for a trios championship, you know, for example? Um, and I know that they've, you know, merged that into the Ring of Honor thing. But that's kind of how you could just separate it. Uh, give um, the people, it doesn't have to be a hard split per se. But if you have a big enough faction, and Lord knows they do have some big factions where they can kind of bleed over into both worlds. Well, if I only if you want to see Takeshita defend, you know, his single title, you know, when he gets one, for example, he would do so on collision. Because that's going to be where the Continental Championship lives, for example. And All if right, you want to see we, 
Go ahead. We got folks chiming in for YouTube here. We got okay. some comments to bring into this. Keep this going. Chuck Cage on YouTube. Do you think they should give people like Scott Demore and Gabe Sapolsky type of people to run each show to give them different vibes? I'll Chuck jump Cage. in here right away and say I can't imagine Tony Khan giving anyone the keys. <laughs> <laughs> Got him involved. But do you think they should? A thousand It'd be percent. A nice idea, but I, I don't see that happening. Listen, I salivated at the fact that Scott Demore left um, or were fired from Impact. At the fact that he could instantly fix the women's division issue in um, AEW. Not yeah. even a question. Um, with 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 Hootie and them, um, they had D Stronger's roster at a point. Um, barely a damn TV deal, but everybody was talking about the moves they were making. Wrestling was being featured in a way that it should. In the, um, in the intergender wrestling wasn't like a feature, but it was just a, a normal thing. I mean, yeah, and we can't forget how much Gabe has done for the industry way, way beyond. I, all of the top wrestlers right now has something to do with Gabe back in the day. And as I mentioned earlier, randomly enough, um, Evolve Wrestling was the premier wrestling, independent wrestling uh, promotion to watch. They Evolve had us in the chokehold. We was like, yeah, if we're going to any city, we're stopping yeah. at the Evolve show first, regardless. <laughs> yeah, we, we we've traveled a considerable distance just to just to go to Evolve. Yeah, like the hell with SummerSlam. We're going to the Evolve show <laughs> three hours before. <laughs> All sweating right. that damn Chuck church. Says maybe just different bookers. That'd be great. I I think yeah. the key would be. It, if you had other people, you say that about AEW shows, in general, though. And then just, you know, yeah, but I, he was going back it, to Tony has his hands in everything. And yeah. Everything. I think that's that's to the detriment of hell. We're seeing it yep. with the Jags, the yep. Jaguars, and everything. It's like how yeah. this man is running. And I wonder football, how the Jaguars are doing soccer, too. and wrestling. Yeah. It, and, and, that's and an honestly, ongoing issue. And honestly, it's got to be somebody that's not willing to kiss his ass because he's the boss or because he has a lot of money. It has to be somebody that's going to be able to stand 10 toes down and run their show and be confident with it through the ups and downs. And we, we talk about the folks like Scott and, and like Gabe. What about I feel Shane? like, Shane yes, they could do Shane? it, yeah. but the opportunity of them getting this once in a lifetime opportunity is yeah, Shane, Shane, exactly. Even though I don't think Shane's like a good promoter per se, but like it has to be somebody like the likes of Shane with like a brain of somebody else. <laughs> Shane is good business wise. You want you want Shane in 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 at your uh your um stakeholders meetings, but then also would he have anybody like Shane in that? No, because that that that's a conversation for another day. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it, Will. I think we got more comments. <laughs> uh, let's see if I'll work any of these other ones in here. Uh, uh that's nah, it. If, if you focus it. on Daniel Bryan and Jericho on Dynamite one week and focus on Edge and Osprey on Collusion that week. Yeah. Like, I think the key is you put people on different shows, but don't make this grand gesture of like, this person's going to this show and this person's going to that show. We don't need a draft. Just <laughs> make it all of a sudden, just certain people are on for one show, certain people are on the other show, but don't draw attention to it. People are going to, if you advertise Jericho and like you say, Adam Cole or somebody for Dynamite, and just make that a regular thing. And okay, they're going to be on. They're on Dynamite for now. Maybe, maybe you just do it for like that. The feud they're working or something. But yeah, yeah. We, don't go with the idea of like you have to have this roster of A and B. Just yeah. put people in their stories on certain shows. Now, and hell, the story fair, ends, you can move them around. To be fair, they kind of started that way with Collision, where House of Black, for example, was only on Saturdays, and right. then maybe FTR was like. Leaning FTR towards Saturdays. Was definitely Saturdays. Because yeah, exactly. Saturdays was the Friends of Punk show. Exactly. So <laughs> right. Friends of Punk show. Right. So that was that was a whole thing. Um yeah, and I think the detention hall, because that's right. where all the delinquents went. And I'm not and then of course once punk left, we see what happens. But it's the it, it is for me kind of like the both shows would be better served with an identity because of the fact that AEW doesn't like overwhelm you with advertising. You know, somehow, some way, ABW is fairly hard to find if you're not looking for it. So you don't really know what you're going to get from week to week unless you really want to watch. And that's re really reflective of the ratings. If I don't have a reason to watch next week, then why would I? And if I didn't watch this week, then I probably don't know what's going on for next week. Um, it's it is what it is. Now, as far as uh, collision goes and what you do that, number one, I think you move it from Saturdays. 
I think that's got to be job one. Hor- so what they would horrible, do, though. horrible placement. But, you know, I said it some weeks ago. It was one of those things where Warner Brothers Discovery was like, see, this is we got spot. this, this is where for we you. Want you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we want you. This is where you're going to be. You it's know what? Did, anywhere else, did, though. did you all talk about the deal at all? We talked about the show. deal. The deal, like the yeah. deal happened. I, I didn't yeah. watch the show. Yeah. Oh, Sorry, my. Okay. I just want to say. I just want to say one thing about <laughs> that, though. I have been so adamant that the deal. We. I mean, Jamal, we've been talking so long about how broke, broke Warner Brothers Discovery is. So they weren't going to cut a deal, considering that they had to. T- toss and scrap so many other projects and they're still in the red right now. So I said they right. weren't going to get a deal unless they were going to get something out of it. And it ain't the content. And we did hear that there potentially may have some stake in AEW now. That checks out. This is why all these sort of supplemental here you go another show, but it's in the pit of hell on Saturday night. Good luck with that. Ever compete with anything um, as the deal. And then now that they finally got the deal, it's like, oh, okay, they got it, but to what to what was, but what was the cost in order to do so and lose some stake in order for them to gain some? It just checks out all the way. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know, man. That the, the collision thing, it's it's a problem, and I think regardless of all the suggestions, it got to get off of Saturday. If we're ever going to care. <laughs> Period. All right, let's switch gears. For the last little bit of the show since we got NXT Halloween Havoc going down this weekend. At Hershey Park, once again, we are outside of the darn Performance Center. I like these shows on the road, so they're running Hershey, Pennsylvania this weekend for Halloween Havoc. And as we've been doing, you know, it's been an NXT staple. They got the people don't like the five match card. I love the five match card. So Sunday yeah. night, here's what we got in front of us, and we can break this down, talk about it. Uh, Kalani Jordan versus Fallon Henley, J.C. Jane, or Jasmine Nix. A fatal influence. We don't know who it's going to be yet. Spin the wheel, make the deal. Stipulation on this landed on Spinner's choice. So gimmick to be decided by those dastardly fatal influence girls for the NXT Women's North American Championship. Mm-hmm. Uh, be there will be an ambulance match between Andre Chase of Chase U and Ridge you. Holland. We also have a tag team match. This is a big one. Roxanne Perez and Cora Jade versus Julia and Stephanie Vakir. Lots of star power in that one. Another spin the wheel, make the deal match. Tables, ladders, and scares for the NXT North American title with Tony D'Angelo versus Oba Femi coming off their big match they had on the premiere episode on the CW. And Trick Williams versus Ethan Page rematch for the NXT championship in a Devil's playground match that is the halloween havoc card for me this one's all about that ladies tag i am really looking forward to that one roxanne and cora against julia and stephanie bakir i am very very excited to see that match and see where they go with that and i know oh, hell they ended the show with uh the newest face showing up where they call, uh, they call her azaria the former yeah. delta that has arrived so they're they have a lot going on with that women's division right now so yeah. that tag match is what's got my curiosity. Who question. wants to get in here first to talk about this? One? My, my first is a question for any of these matches, especially with the gimmicks they got for Halloween Havoc in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Do we see any match that goes from live to a finish in a cinematic match? Maybe. Not bad. Not, yeah. I could see it with Chase Evans. I could totally see that ambulance match with Chase you having some kind of or or start no cinematic and then turn into live and in, the in the ring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because that's the I, I mean that's about that for the Ethan Page match when you talk about the Devil's Playground and you know how these amusement mm. parks and everything set up for their Halloween time period. Yeah, what a great way cook. to do that. You know, there you in go. the theme park okay. for that. So that's why I was thinking maybe go to a a cinematic part part where you you know start in the ring or you know end in the ring, but have some cinematic universe to it. Yeah, because God knows Hershey, 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 Pennsylvania have nothing else to get offer besides that. <laughs> <laughs> Miles will go I mean, for look, bro, first of all, first of all, you put some respect on the, on the good people of Hershey. They got a Probanti Brothers, damn it, and I, you know, and that's 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 worth. Do the they time really? To along. Yeah, they do. It's cross oh. in the park because why wouldn't it be? Huh. But but no, but like I could definitely see it ending in like a vat of chocolate in uh the hershey factory or something like that 
Um, you know, just because that's a very WWE thing to do. But yeah, like if it doesn't end in the theme park, then and 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 also like to be fair, uh, the Giant Center is where they're hosting the event. The theme park is very close by, so okay. I I can see it happening um, where they do the thing. When you said Hershey Park, I thought it was at the football stadium, and they they were doing it outside, and that would have oh. been something a little bit more bananas. But no, uh, it's at the Giant Center. That's cool. But the theme park is very close by. You know, less than five minute drive. I kind of I need to see that happen now. That's that's really what it is. As far as the sh- as far as the show goes, um, another solid five match show. You know, a good three hours. I'm I'm not mad at it at all. You know, it's an elevated NXT. This is exactly what a takeover should be. And it's Halloween Havoc, so it's all about the stipulations. This is the show you load up with, like, if you're going to do crazy outside-the-box shit, this is the show to do it on. It's Halloween Havoc. So you can really get crazy and creative with stuff. So if you want to have someone in Nevada chocolate, this is the show to do it. Please. Please do. (laughs) Yeah. No, I I like it. I I like it. And and I also like the fact that they have – It's everything's a little bit different. The, you know, spin the wheel, make the deal type of a thing, you know, has an allure to it. Um, and they, they're doing that in three out of the five matches. And then you have a good old-fashioned ambulance match that should be all over the place. And then the uh, the you know, kind of like the big Julia and Stephanie Vacare, you know, being in the same ring together, you know, facing off against Roxanne Perez. If not now, then when? Like, when does she be NXT? You know, but it, it will this be her, her um, swan song in NXT? Because we've been saying that for the past couple months. Like, if not, not now, in the tag way. match, not in the yeah. tag match at yeah. all. Got to get that well, title sure. off in one way or another. Yeah, right. So you know, it, it's just like that's got to be coming soon, and we'll see how you know what that looks like as they move towards like Survivor Series or whatever they do down the road. But yeah, a quick little show. I like it. What? Hey, your thoughts on Halloween Havoc? I said what I have to say. I mean, um, I, I love I love five I love five match cars. They're always bangers. So I agree with you in terms of the women's tag match being the, the peak interest. But overall, I think it's going to be a good time. So it's it's hard, it's hard to ever be disappointed when you know you're going to get in and get out with these shows. You know you're going to have quality pacing, uh, match with stakes. You might get a surprise or two. You got a gimmick pay per view, ple. Um, what's not to be excited for here? There you go. Besides, why why the hell aren't we going up Hershey? That's a hop skip for us, man. We should have went. <laughs> I'm sure tickets are still available, being the running the big building. So yeah, folks are looking to get the Halloween Havoc. I'm sure it can be done. Is that is that and that's Sunday? Sunday. Yeah, it's it's yes. uh this this coming Sunday, yeah. Yeah. All right. Sunday yeah. night. And then of course Crown Jewel is the weekend after. Yeah. Yes, that's Saturday. Yes, that'll be yeah. Saturday afternoon. So something to talk about next week on the show. Before we wrap it up, anything else y'all want to get into? We got a minute or two here of free time. Just Should a little side joke. Just a little side joke, a little inside joke. So, two uh-huh. things when you talk about detention, you know, and everything of that nature, you know, I just thought about Miss Toy. So, that just just put that out here. Shout out to Miss Toy. So, just <laughs> put that for you. <laughs> Would you was no. in detention or something? Never, never been there before. No, know anything about it. That was more of a dynamite kid, not so much of a collision boy. <laughs> um, okay, so real real quick. Jericho is ROA champion. Why? Ugh. Yeah, I got I got something we can kill this time with because I I'm not giving Jericho the time of day here. Um <laughs> he, he must got a stake in the company or something. <laughs> Venom <laughs> Jericho's in the Warner Brothers deal. Yeah, clearly he might have been right at the table signing it right with them. Um, Venom, um, Venom 3. What was it? What's the whole thing? The Last Dance. Oh, the Last Dance. Yeah, checked it out. Um, embargoes up. It's you can go to theaters, check it out now. Probably drop a review, uh, sometime soon. Um, it's a lot of the same. Um, if you're gonna go in there, just you know, kind of cut your brain off a little bit Uh. and just enjoy it. Tons of plot holes, a lot of laughs, a lot of silliness. Um, it's it's a it's a it's a best friend film that happens to be blanket in the comic book story, I guess. Yeah. Um, and and also they said this is the last one. There's two, there's two post credit scenes. What the hell is Sony doing? That's my take. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We're getting I'm our wrestling movies, it. comics. And, and since more. we're uh, you know talking movies real quick, I'm seeing Conclave uh, this weekend, and also yeah. the Andy Lau movie. Um, uh, hell, I can't think of what it's called. 
uh, High Forces. Um, mm -hmm. Chinese, uh, if, if you've ever seen a Hong Kong movie where shit goes down in a close setting, this time just happens to be a hijacked plane, uh, you know what it's going to be. So I'm going to see both of those this weekend. And uh, yeah, check us out on Letterboxd, uh, BGB yeah. Media, and uh, you'll get a blurb there. There you go. There you go. So we got the boss man here this week. We get to get into all the entertainment and movie and comic book stuff. Because as we always say when we wrap up the show, it's Big Gold Belt Media, wrestling, movies, comics, and more. So since we were just running down the letterbox there, we'll hit all the hit all the plugs here as we wrap it up. On the social media, it's at Big Gold Belt across the board. So whether you're talking X or Instagram, all that good stuff, social media at Big Gold Belt. The show streams live every Thursday at 8 p.m., lives on on YouTube in the afterwards, and of course drops in podcast form on all your favorite podcast platforms. But we are live every Thursday on Twitch, YouTube, streaming on X, all that good stuff. Let's see what else we got in here. I did the social media. The website, of course, at BigGoldBelt.com. <laughs> got to push the old website, get all your <laughs> reviews and stuff, like you are saying, movie reviews and all that stuff coming up on there. So. All your entertainment forms covered at Big Gold Belt Media. So next week, we'll talk about some uh, Halloween Havoc. We'll have Crown Jewel come in. Who knows what other drama will be coming up since the, yeah. the wrestling world does not stop. As we yeah. well know, it does not stop. But there we go, folks. As the theme of tonight's show was, please go out there and vote. We have our nonpartisan statement of the evening. And we will hammer that and help. Just hammer it next week, too. Yeah. We've got two weeks left here. So just go out there and vote, folks. We'll talk to you soon. See you next Thursday night. Until then, cast that vote. Talk to you later. Bye.